Hey, what's up you guys? Shardmas Prime here doing another DC Multiverse action figure review on the Aquaman 2 and the Lost Kingdom, or Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. I want to keep calling it Aquaman 2, but we're looking at the Storm Seahorse Deluxe figure. I'm excited to look at this thing and I'm excited for Aquaman 2. So let's get a look at it, but first we gotta hit that theme song. So the packaging is pretty standard. Big old window right here. If you hear a noise maker in the background, that's my neighbor. Anyway, you can see Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom's written right there. DC Multiverse Storm. It says Storm right over there. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. And then on the back, you can see Aquaman and Storm in the Lost Kingdom over there, I guess. I don't know. And then on the side, you can see how the window creeps over. Creeps up to the top right there. Not much more at the bottom. So let's get to it and crack this thing open. And if you're trying to get your McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures, you can do so at it. Big, big, get your big badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com. Click the link in the description below. <laughs> and here is Storm out of the packaging, and wow, jeez, what an incredible looking piece. Now, it is very staction figure y, not a lot of articulation over here, but it is painted out and sculpted very well. I really like looking at this thing. It is quite a spectacle to behold for the eyes. <laughs> anyway, this thing is cool. I want to see it with Aquaman. I'll show that off, or I may have already showed that at the beginning of the video, but yeah, let's get a closer look at this figure. I'm getting accessories with this figure. You get the trading card right here, and there is a read-up over here on the back. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now. And there is some assembly required uh, with this. You do have to port it into the bottom of the stand, which has the DC logo right over there. I did have to heat this up though, it was a little bit tricky getting this bottom port in there and then you also have to assemble the tail, which was a lot easier to do. <laughs> so the paint and the sculpt on this thing is very impressive. I really, really dig it. Uh, we get some nice texturing throughout. Now this headpiece is painted gold, uh, but the rest of the gold that you see on this figure is actually just the plastic. So they don't have the gold going throughout, but man, this thing is not shy of having paint apps or anything <laughs> of that sort because it is just loaded with all kinds of fading going in and out over here. I really love seeing the teal and purple moving throughout on this thing. It is very, very cool, man. And then you can see we get that gold plastic right here, which looks all right. It's just not as shiny as it is on the headpiece right there. So that's a minor gripe for me. Uh, it's fairly soft material. There's no articulation at the torso, but you can see all that paint, all that beautiful sculpted work right here just looks incredible. I am very pleased with that. Looking at the green right over there. And then you can see the underbelly of this sea dragon. Not a seahorse, I guess, but sea dragon or whatever. It's a giant seahorse. These fins look awesome. Really love the blue fading in and out right there from the white. God, this thing looks awesome. Just a dope looking piece. I wish this had bendy wire in it. I do love this paint though right here. That looks sick. But yeah, if there was a little bit more going on as far as articulation, that would have been uh, preferred. I definitely love my articulation. Then just getting full look at the underbelly of this thing. Man, very cool. And then there's the saddle right there. You have the strap right here for Aquaman to grab. Very, very neat. I really like it. And it does have some articulation as well. Man, look at that gold eye right there. That's pretty cool too. So you can rotate the head. It is on a ball joint and you get some pivoting over here as well. It moves up and down. So it is on a double ball joint. So you get the ball joint there and inside the head. So it does kind of shift forward and back like a pile driver and pivots and rotates. So that's the most movement you're getting from any other articulated section on this. The fins move up and down. You can splay them outward a little bit though, so that's pretty cool. And then you get rotation at the tail, and then we have a ball joint right here at the body, or at the base of it right there. You can pivot a bit, and it moves up and down side to side. Now to measure out Storm, to get the height of this thing down here, you can see it's at about 14 inches tall on the base, 
And then from nose to the end of that tail, you're looking at about 13 inches across. And then for a fictional creature comparison, here we have an Avatar Banshee next to Storm. And yeah, I mean, the wingspan on the Banshee is just way wider than it is on the length of the Storm figure. But yeah, their color schemes are very similar over here, right? I don't know. Very, very cool. McFarlane has these creatures down really well with their sculpts and paint man really good looking pieces and then here's storm next to the other aquaman two figures that i've already reviewed we have aquaman king kordax black manta and stealth aquaman and i will show this aquaman riding uh, this storm figure it's very easy to get him up there and i don't have a gripping hand on there right now but you could just you know make believe like that very easy to do very, very cool. Then here's Storm and Aquaman. Next to your average six inch scale figure, we have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider Man. Whoa, that thing looks awesome! Oh, I wanna ride the seahorsey! I wanna ride the seahorsey! I wanna ride the. Ah! If you guys enjoyed this video, I enjoyed making this video. This thing was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much for watching. Pretty short and sweet video. Not a whole lot to say about this thing aside from me just really liking it a lot. I also didn't mention that it does have this pearlescent sheen throughout. It's got a gloss to it that I really, really dig, and it makes it look like a very cool sea creature. I don't have too many complaints. There are some things that I wish to have seen on it, like a big old bendy wire tail. That would have been pretty awesome. Getting gold paint on the armor on the front of it would have been pretty cool, you know, for that whole chest plate section right there, or the saddle anyway. That would have been nice as well, but you know what? It's still pretty shiny, and it still looks good to me. I did, it doesn't feel like they cheaped out in that regard. It just would have looked a little bit nicer with gold paint added on top of it, like how it does on that headpiece. So I have a couple of little gripes, but for the most part, I am very pleased. I did pick this up at the McFarland Toy Store uh, for a fairly cheaper price than normal, I think. It cost me around 35 bucks, and for that price point, I'm pretty satisfied, man. I'm gonna give this Storm figure a sud rating of... I love it! And I'd like to know what you guys think, so please let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see the latest in action figure news, you can find it all over at toynewsi.com, and you can stay in touch with me on social media via Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and on whatnot, and I will catch you guys later. Peace! That's crispy. Hey, what's up, guys? Shardmas Prime here. Hey. Century Productions here, and we're talking about hella sick figs. That's right, we're gonna be talking about new Marvel Legends and a whole bunch of other goodies. Come through to the live stream Saturday night, 5 p.m. We'll be closing off at around 6 p.m. Let's get this thing started and talk about hella sick figs. Tune in. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.